Hungry big fella? I think so. Uh. Boy, do I feel lucky. With special permission here from the clock, we've been allowed into his private training regime. You'll never see this again, only on Channel 10, only on Hoops TV. Look at the strength of the man. Now that the croc's all buffed and strong, he's ready to show us what he does on game night. With referees, tigers, bullets. Show us your stuff, croc. Steve, it's come to the end of the day with a croc. But before we leave, he's going to show me the famous death roll. But I got to get him angry first. Uh, your mother's a cheap suitcase. Come on. Ah! <laughs> We'll be back after the break, but now I want to see what I can get into with my new ride. But now it's time for Kaboom! The best dunks of week two of the Mitsubishi Challenge. Probably when I had 61 points against the Townsville Suns in Townsville in the last game of the year. And it was something that I didn't ever think that I'd do and uh, I probably won't ever do it again. Heel, drops and shoots. You're kidding. Here he goes. Oh, oh my goodness. It goes down. 61. I wear number 23 because that was my football number when I was growing up in, in Victoria. All sorts of food, Mexican, roasts, uh, and I love ice cream. I'd probably be a footballer. Probably would have tried to play NFL football. I missed the game. Did we win? Yeah! You want me to play next week? No! Uh, well, obviously, I'm not needed here. I guess it's time for me to go to the beach and for you to see Saturday Rat. There were loads of hot shots last weekend in the Mitsubishi Challenge. We start with the Camber Cannon's new import, Javon Scales, against the King. Javon made his presence felt, running the lanes like a greyhound and stroking high percentage shots, hitting 11 of 18 from the field against a tough King's interior D. Leon, above the rim, Trimmingham, hit form against the North Melbourne Giants. He had a game high of 34 points. He's becoming difficult to double team because of his quick moves down low in the post. Leon hit 13 to 22 shots from the field and grabbed a handy 15 rebounds. But the hottest of the weekend was Andrew Gage. Friday night, he hit a week two high of 36 points. Then Saturday night, he hit the 10,000 NBL point milestone. Quite a milestone tonight, 10,000 points. You must be pretty satisfied with that as a career highlight. 
Oh yeah, I think it's a tremendous milestone and something that I'm, I'm proud of and it's a lot of points to score and I mean the way it was tonight, I felt like it was, you know, it's certainly uh, a long, long time ago I started and you sort of think back on those types of situations but um, it's good to get out of the way and now move on and see how many more I can put in I guess. There it is, 10,000 points in the Mitsubishi Challenge for Andrew Gaze. The big games this weekend begin with the North Melbourne Giants facing hometown rivals, the Southeast Melbourne Magic. This game is not just for hometown pride, there's much more to it. The man to look for in this game is rising star Sam McKinnon in the Magic uniform. You may not know that Sam McKinnon advanced through the basketball ranks in a North Melbourne singlet. Yes, and two years ago, Brian Gorgian stole, I'm sorry, recruited Sam. So how does that make Brett Brown feel to see Sam in a magic uniform? Um, I get sick to my stomach every time I see him uh, in a magic uniform. To lose a Sam McKinnon, it was extremely disappointing. My matchup to look out for in this game is the DMAC on Adonis Jordan. The other big game this week is the Brisbane Bullets at home to the Perth Wildcats. When Shane Hill hit the winning basket in this game last year, it brought an end to the longest NBL game in history. This game went into four overtimes, and then they only won by one point. It makes it a great game tonight. I mean, every game that we have played against Perth, uh, you know, the playoffs aside, uh, back in 93, uh, they've been great games. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a good test for us. I think we've gotten a lot of our, our wrinkles ironed out as far as our rotations go. And, you know, they're, they're a team that we respect and really enjoy to play, so I think the fans will be in for a good one. Also in this week's round, some milestones, beginning with Mark Leader from the North Melbourne Giants. Congratulations on your 300th NBL game tonight. Birthdays, Canberra Cannons rookie Simon Dwight turns 19. No rookie, the Kings' Phil Smythe celebrates next Thursday, 36 years old. Andrew Goodwin from the Brisbane Bullets turns 24 next Friday. Happy birthday, guys. You gotta keep them separated. Last week, Michelle Tim showed you how to handle the basketball. And this week, we're going to take it one step further and show you how to dribble the basketball on the move. Whenever you dribble the basketball on the move, the first thing you do is start off with the basics. So what I'm going to do is walk on one side of this line and dribble it on the other. Of course, with the right hand going up, see how the basketball is on the opposite side of where I'm walking and come back with the left. Then as I feel a little bit more confident, I'm going to take it into a jog and dribble the basketball should come about waste time. And today my basketball helper, helper is Kate. Come on over here and dribble that basketball. And I'll instruct you how to go through it. Just take it slow, dribble it inside the blue line. All right, speed it up a little bit. Okay, one more time. All right, good step. All right, now the next thing to do is to take it one step further and show you how to protect the basketball while you're dribbling it and keep it away from the defender, the imaginary defender that's on this side. So I'm gonna dribble it as I'm sliding. Opposite way, with the opposite hand. Protect the basketball with the other hand. See, I'm protecting the basketball with my right arm and dribbling it with the left. And going back and picking up speed. All right, Kate, you give it a try. That's good. Okay, one more time. Okay, all right. Okay, gotta stay here. All right, thanks for uh, helping me out. Did you have a good time? Yep. Okay, good stuff. And remember, if you practice the basics like that, you're gonna improve your basketball skills, dribbling the basketball, dribbling it on the move and with the fence on you. And remember, practice makes perfect. 
Here we go. It's Hoops Notice Board for all the basketball and camp details. First up, if you'd like to see Trish Fallon and the Opals in action, the Golmart International Test Series against Korea begins next week. The games will be held in Wollongong, Adelaide, Mount Gambia, Ballarat, and Danadong. If you think you could be an Opal or a Boomer, and you want some more training, holiday camps will be held at Bankstown Basketball Association and Western Suburbs Association in July. For booking, call the Sydney King's office now on 02-319-7777. TV. Nah, couldn't be. Trish Fallon, what are you doing here? I'm just here to catch a few waves, Steve. All right, well, you got a minute? I have. Please. Okay. Well, Trish, you're obviously a bit of a beach girl, but how did you start playing basketball? Uh, when I was about 15 years old, I was invited to play with a local club in Geelong, and the guy noticed my height, which is an advantage in basketball, so he asked me to join in a, a mixed competition with the boys, so I started off from there. Did you take to it easily? I know you play tennis and you do a bit of body surfing, a little bit of everything. Do you pick up everything really quickly? Well, basketball, fortunately, I did, and um, I think my, help, my height helped a lot, but um, I think changing from an individual sport and coming into a team sport, I really like that aspect of it, so I'm really enjoying it a lot still now. Well, there's lots of basketball action last year. What do you think was your highlight, though? Uh, Oz 94 was a great tournament being held in front of a home crowd, and fortunately, we just we got fourth place, but uh, we just missed out on gold by a point, and then we lost to the US to play off the bronze, but um, we know we're right up there with the, rest, the best in the world, so um, come the next uh, Olympics, we're going to be going for a medal there. Ma. Fallon, Lee does well. The final is glorious. This is very rare in these championships. And Chris Fallon, Fallon's playing down. Oh, yeah, what a fantastic fast break by Chris Fallon. Michelle Tim going to fast break, Chris Fallon. Oh, it's almost through the roof to Fallon. Oh, Do you think playing in that international tournament gave you a better feel for playing over in Germany? Yeah, that definitely helped a lot. There's a lot of the best players in the world that came to Oz 94, and most of them are playing in Europe, so that gave me a good lead-up to go to Germany and know that I've already practiced against some of the best players in, in the world, actually. So um, to go over there and have that practice early really helped my game a lot when I got to Germany. Well, you're known as the glamour girl of basketball. How do you deal with that? Well, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot, but... um. The thing is that we need someone to promote the sport as much as possible and we have a, there's a few players in the league that are doing that. We have people going out to schools and doing a lot of promotional work with the media and at the moment that's probably the only way that's going to really help our sport become more popular from the public. So um, once the public knows that it's such a great sport to watch, not only the men but the women, then maybe that'll die off a bit but at the moment I'm enjoying it. I want to hold you up and get out in the water now. Okay. All right, after you. in the water too? Of course, I'm an adventurous kind of guy, aren't I? Yep, okay, all right. go. Looking pretty big. And Trish, I'll get that next wave with you, all right? Okay. Something my back or something, my knee, my ankle, or all of them. As a matter of fact, if she thinks I'm getting in that water, she's crazy, it's freezing. How tall do you think you should be to play basketball? Um, six foot, seven foot. Five foot. Six foot. Do you think you should be really tall to be able to play basketball? Yeah, or small. Um, we say over five foot. Over five foot? Yeah, I think most players are over five foot. How tall do you have to be to play basketball? Um, 